Hey you guys, good morning, happy Friday. I'm hopping on real quick. Um, there's been conversation that I've had lately um, in the dating world. So I wanted to bring you on a get ready with me. Um, I am throwing on my clothes and um, just trying to freshen up, get ready to go to the gym before I get my work day started. Um, you know, something that I am starting to learn when you get into the dating world, when you go into the dating world and you are codependent, you have your traumas, you have things that you have not worked through and on with yourself because it's not an exercise about everyone else. This is about you and only you and no one else but you. But I'm going to tell you something. When you don't work on yourself, I think there's ways that you can tell that you haven't been working on yourself. And the more that I continue working through my journey, I work through the things that make me sad, angry, hurt, um, whatever it is, right? Um, the more that you go learning about yourself and the more you don't, I truly believe healing is not linear. Everybody says that. Fine. I've absorbed that in my brain. Healing does not have a finish line. I've said this before. When you make the commitment to heal, you're making a commitment to yourself for life, that you are always going to put yourself as a priority with zero guilt, with zero shame, but you have the understanding that you from that moment on will be healing the rest of your life because life doesn't just have one small moment, one blip of something bad. Life will have it, but you will then just have these routines and rhythms in place to continue working through anything at that point. It makes you brave, it makes you courageous. Quite honestly, it makes you stronger than somebody that chose to do a 30 day crash diet. Like you are making a life commitment to yourself that you choose you. And so part of that is because you're doing it every day and because it's pretty aggressive, once you choose to make those decisions to care and love for yourself, you don't realize how far you've gone until you have moments where you recognize I am different. How you handle something, how you process something, um, how you bounce back from something. There's all these different varying ways, right? And something that I have learned and I'm learning to, it, it's becoming more and more loud in appearance in my life. Something I am learning about my process. For so long, I was muted. I learned, I, I was conditioned that if I would just shut up and not share my true thoughts and not share my true opinion, it would help keep things a little easier and I would get less critiqued. Um, still critiqued, right? But less of it. And so I think it's important to remember that you don't know where somebody has come from and they could have come from a situation similar to that where they learned that they weren't allowed to truly express themselves. They could not truly, truly live within their skin, their being, their home, their body, their life, being honest. Some people it's because they can physically, you know, um, be abused. Others emotionally, verbally, uh, mentally. So it's important to recognize that, right? I have been going on dates. Y'all, dating is not for the faint of heart. I don't care what damn age you are, but certainly at my age, because when you're working and juggling children um, and your responsibilities you're juggling and all of these different factors, judging or dating is not, it's just something that takes a lot of energy. Um, and I have committed to myself that I would allow some of my energy to go there because I do want to be in a relationship at the end of the day. I want to be in the right relationship. I want to be in a healthy relationship. Um, and the only way to find that person is by putting yourself out there, right? However, it's been very fascinating and very interesting because something that I am learning um, that I don't like, that I don't like, and I will never, ever have a companion, a partner in my life that has this attribute. It's a deal breaker to me. It's truly become a deal breaker. And this men, this works for men and women. Okay. This is not, um, this is not a just men, but in my situation, because I date men, 
um, you know, date them. I speak to men. I talk to men. I'm in the process of trying to find my partner, right? Because that sounds really bad. But anyways, um, what I have learned is assumptions. I already didn't like assumptions. I am a person that likes to get things from the horse's mouth. Very much a person that likes to get things from a horse's mouth because assumptions cost money in business. They cost a lot of heartache. They are expensive. Personally, same thing. Um, they're unnecessary. They have no place truly around um, because ultimately what it's you doing when you learn to be mature enough, when you make time to assume, you should have used that time to ask the person or ask the resource because all you're doing is decided to be a little more important than someone else and invent, truly invent a story in your head of what you think things are. And so over the last month maybe um and it happened before too people assume right they've assumed things they've assumed things about my opinion and my thought of talking to them they've assumed things about what i'm thinking what i'm going to do next y'all that drives me crazy come on we are two adults have a conversation right? So I'm going to give you guys an example. There was somebody that I thought was really great, like truly great. They made a scenario in their head, truly a scenario in their head. What they lost out in the process, they lost one of the best damn things in their life because I'm an amazing person. And in the process of losing an amazing person, I also get juked on a good person because I thought they were a good person. Hate that. Yesterday, same thing happened. You know, had an incident where somebody had reached out and I didn't respond what they believed to be quick enough or how they believed I should have responded. Instead of asking clarifying questions, they assumed, I just wasn't interested and just assumed that, just never mind then, like withdrawing. Y'all, come on, don't rob someone. Because when you rob someone of being able to share honestly with you, you rob yourself of somebody and potentially your person in your life, like your soulmate, your partner for life. You potentially can. I'm not saying that these people were. It's an example. But I find it so irresponsible because what it teaches me and how I perceive it is this. You, you try to put yourself in the game to date me or to talk to me. You're interested in me and you think I'm great. But because I didn't do something the way you wanted me to do it quick enough or how you wanted me to do it, you then assumed that I'm about to back out and you allow your fear to lead you. And whether it's ego too, pride, I don't know. I don't know. But I know for sure it's at least, it's at least the fear of where you've been. It tells me and it teaches me. And I know this. It means you've been hurt before and you're hurt and you don't want to hurt again. And so instead, okay, I'm going to withdraw. I'm taking it back. Never mind. Okay, it's not going to work out. Sorry, wish you well. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. Because I'll tell you, like the one thing, like I said, that I have certainly learned is I will not assume things. It might take me a day or two. It might take me a week, but I will get to a place where I can ask some clarifying questions so I can better understand what decision I need to make that would be a great decision for me and for them in return because it allows me to then take their feelings into consideration based on the thoughts that they shared with me. It matters, it matters, it matters. And y'all, this works and is applicable whether you are dating, you're thinking about dating, if you have children, if you are, you have a significant other, um, this is so applicable. Ask clarifying questions, ask them, hey, and be honest. Hey, I just, I know we don't know each other well yet, right? So if you're dating, I don't, I know we don't know each other very well yet, but just so you know, like I got really screwed over before. And so if I don't hear something back from you, fear of abandonment, dude, like, so can you just reassure me? And you might be busy. If you let me know, hey, I'm busy, I will respect that. And I will give you the time you need to answer something. If it's your significant other that you've been married to for 20 years and you're trying to have a better marriage because your marriage is falling apart when you're honest with yourself, there is no damn marriage left. Y'all are just living together because of the kids or the dogs or whatever the hell the reason is, right? Being able to say like, hey, you know, 
I'm starting to feel invisible in our marriage and I'm just going to be honest about it. But what I want to do is I want us to, to try to recover this thing, right? And so I'm just going to ask you clarifying questions from time to time. Or if I feel insecure about something, I'm going to share that with you. I'm not ballsy enough to do it face to face. So I'm going to send you a text. But if you'll just give me, you know, let me know if you need time to answer it when I send it or whatever. But just acknowledge that it arrived and I will be patient with you, right? Those kind of things for your kids being able to say, hey, listen, as a mom or a dad, we always assume you're either doing drugs, you're drinking, you're up to no good. I'm going to never assume again when it comes to you and I. I want a good, solid relationship. And because of that, I am hopeful that I'm going to ask you clarifying questions from time to time because my instincts to assume worst case scenario, and I don't mean to because I love you. I just love you. But I need to stop assuming because I'm creating invisible stories in my head. I'm making them up as if I'm the narrator of this planet and I'm not. You know, so anyways, I thought I would share that. Um, I think it's important. Um, certainly a good lesson for me because my list of deal breakers is, I don't want to say it's big, but it's solid. It's really solid. And that's something that I will just never have again in my life is a partner that assumes and narrates the story of my life without allowing me to be a part of the character role in my life right? Don't rob me of my say. Don't rob me of my opinion. You get to hear because if I'm going to be a part of something that is life changing and affects my life, then I certainly want to say because the people that truly know me, including myself that knows me, knows I'm very loving, caring, and loyal. And so assuming that I'm not doing something that would be loving, caring, or loyal is a false narrative. So anyways, with that said, I got to get my ass to the gym, but I see you. I love you. You matter to me and I hope you have a kick-ass Friday. Bye.